Number 15. Kangwa Ren Some YouTubers do heinous things for views. Kangwa Ren is one of them. This YouTuber, known as Reset, has a million subscribers who tune in to see what mischief and mayhem he can think of next. But this time, his particular cruelty brought him face to face with a potential two-year prison sentence. The 20-year-old Chinese-born YouTuber based in Barcelona filled Oreos with toothpaste and gave them to a homeless man to eat. The 52-year-old homeless man ate five of them. After feeding the man with the tainted Oreos, Reset seemed to understand that he was pushing the boundaries of decency. The video, viewed thousands of times, earned the YouTuber over 2,000 euros, but may cost him up to 30,000 euros in compensation to the homeless man. On top of a potential two-year sentence, the homeless man, identified as Jorge L, said he became ill five minutes after eating them. Number 14. Hannah Sabata Here's an idea. If you rob a bank, don't post about it on YouTube. 19-year-old YouTuber Hannah Sabata did and was shortly thereafter arrested on November 28, 2012 for allegedly robbing a bank in Waco, Nebraska the previous day. How are police so quick to catch her? Well, for one thing, she uploaded a video of herself in which she was surrounded by cash and boasting about what she did to the bank. The self-titled Chick Bank Robber was quickly identified and sentenced to 10 to 20 years behind bars. That's a lot of time for a mere $6,000. Number 13. Randy Robert Stare. This man operated a YouTube channel called Pioneers Productions. There, he uploaded sketch videos including collaborations with other content creators, but his channel was rehashed in 2014, instead featuring an animated series called The Ember's Ghost Squad. The channel took an even darker turn in June of 2017 when Stare uploaded his final video. In the video, he declared his hatred towards those involved in the Nickelodeon animated series Danny Phantom, whose character Ember McLean is who the main character in EGS is modeled after. In the video, an animated version of himself and a character from his EGS series are depicted taking the lives of students at a high school. The 24-year-old proceeded to live his animated series by taking the lives of his co-workers at a store in Ways Market in Pennsylvania. During the late night shift, he then took his own life. It was truly a horrible event. Number 12. Dan Van Lee This man is a YouTuber who founded the channel Troll Station. The name of the channel says enough. Van Lee is known for causing public hijinks with the intent to go viral, but he bit off a bit more than he could chew in July of 2015 when his YouTube hijinks took him to two London galleries where he and his pals pulled a heist prank. While these videos were trolling, in reality they were so believable that museum goers raced from the galleries in fear. One visitor even fainted from the episode. Due to this misbehavior, Van Lee was taken to court and sentenced to 12 weeks behind bars, where his pals received up to 20 weeks for intent to cause fear and provoking unlawful violence. Van Lee's trouble didn't end there. He was also sentenced to 24 weeks for a fake briefcase bomb hoax. Because of bail conditions, Van Lee's channel went dark in March of 2016. The channel claimed they were taking time to reevaluate their influence. Number 11. Logan Paul In one particularly controversial and notorious video, Paul visited Okigahara Forest, where he had shot footage of a man who had taken his own life, an act that was considered seriously unethical. However, this alone did not lead to charges being filed against him. After watching Paul's videos, Police in Japan say he could be charged with at least four different crimes. Destruction of property, public indecency, interference with business operations, and traffic violations. YouTube agrees that punishment is fitting. They gave a statement saying that they removed his channel from Google Preferred 
A former police detective is completely flabbergasted by Paul's actions. In his own words, he's left video evidence on his own YouTube channel. After the reviews of Paul's behavior started rolling in, he left YouTube for a while to reflect on his behavior. Number 10. Alvaro Castillo Nothing good comes from an obsession with the events on April 20th, 1999 in Columbine, Colorado. As YouTuber Alvaro Castillo demonstrated when he attempted to copy their actions, at his high school in August of 2006, the young man's YouTube channel was not popular. With only 60 subscribers and a half a dozen or so video vlogs, in the vlogs, he expressed his love for movies like Predator and Natural Born Killers, but he didn't go so far as to declare his desire to be either one of those things. On the morning in question, Castillo took the life of his father and left a note. He then headed to school with the intent to take more lives. Armed to the teeth, Castillo marched into Orange High School. Thankfully, he didn't manage to take any more lives but he did seriously hurt two students when he opened fire. When he was brought to trial, the defense argued that Castillo was insane and that he thought that God ordered him to commit these actions. Although judging by the videos he made, Castillo certainly was mentally disturbed. The defense team wasn't able to prove insanity. The event became even worse as the 21-year-old barely reacted to the guilty verdict that was read. He was given life without parole. He stated that he understood that he'd hurt people with his actions, though he did not intend to. Number 9. Daddy 05 When parents decide to make child stars out of their kids, things can either go good or bad. YouTuber Daddy 05 stepped over this line. The owners of the channel, Heather and Michael Martin, who hailed from Maryland, often posted controversial videos as they used their five-kid family in YouTube pranks. The charges in question are due to one prank the couple took out on their 9- and 10-year-olds, Cody and Emma. A neuropsychologist found both children suffered from mental injury because of the videotaping incidents and what went on during the videos. Their actions resulted in child neglect charges that sent them to probation after the couple pleaded guilty. They did so under the Alfred plea, which allows them to maintain their position of innocence while at the same time allowing that the evidence is stacked against them. They expressed remorse and were given five years probation. The state attorney chief said, The evaluations that were conducted of Heather and Mike Obviously, their judgment was somewhat warped in participating in these videos, but there wasn't any intent, malicious intent to damage the children. Here's hoping this doesn't happen with any other YouTube child stars. Number 8. Lion Maker Although gaming YouTubers seem innocent enough, they often pull in a large number of child fans, and in the wrong hands with that can come inappropriate behavior. Lion Maker is accused of developing inappropriate relationships with child fans, even tweeting out images of one of these children. In one tweet, he wrote, I have fooled all of you and have made plenty of money while doing it. Lion Maker quickly removed the tweets, but many of his followers saw them, leading to an investigation into the 27 year old Belgian YouTuber who goes by the real name of Marcus Wilton. At the time of his exchanges, Wilton boasted 200 million plus views through his personal commentary gameplay videos. Every day he chatted with his teen and preteen fans over group Skype for hours. Those in the conversations noted that the normally upbeat YouTuber would sometimes reveal a different side, declaring himself mentally unstable or ranting about this or that. It may come as no surprise then that this behavior led the YouTuber to preying on the now 16-year-old girl whose Twitter persona was Paige the Panda. The family has taken police action against Lion Maker, with one member saying that the girl has been badly affected by everything that's unfolded It may even be brainwashed. All we want to do is protect her and keep her from meeting up with him, but we can't watch her all the time, the girl's family said. 
Wilton, who has yet to be formally charged for his actions, may be aiming at making a comeback. His YouTube channel, which had gone dark around June 2016, suddenly came back to life in November 2017 with a replacement star. Somebody by the name of the ex-sergeant, the newbie wrote in a comment on one of his videos claiming that Lion Maker would soon return. If he does return, parents beware. Number 7. Jared Lee Lothner When Jared Lothner became a YouTuber, he began spreading theories that would take a dark turn. Though he had a small audience, his view counts was up there. With disturbing videos that focused on the government, mind tricks, religion, and a currency he invented, Lothner was clearly off his rocker. But it wasn't completely clear just how far he would go. That is, until January of 2011, when he opened fire on a political rally in Arizona, taking the lives of six and hurting many more, including U.S. Representative Gabriel Giffords, who was his target. Instead, he took the lives of a nine-year-old and chief U.S. District Court Judge John Roll. While Giffords miraculously survived, Lothner pleaded guilty for which he was given life behind bars plus 140 years. Number 6. Temerlan Sarnayev The man responsible for the events at the Boston Marathon on April 15, 2013, Temerlan Sarnayev allegedly had a YouTube channel. Although Sarnayev never uploaded videos to his channel, he did follow, like, and comment upon several questionable videos. The account has been active since August 2012, long before he became infamous for the events that took the lives of three people and harmed several hundred during the Boston Marathon. The 26-year-old brother had his life taken during a police standoff, while his younger brother was found hiding out in a boat. The younger brother was questioned and confessed that he and his brother wanted revenge for events in Iraq and Afghanistan. He was convicted of 30 charges on April 8, 2015. Number 5. Pekka Eric Ovnen. This troubled 18-year-old took his anger to school in Finland on November 7, 2007 and took the lives of eight people. His online persona explained the mentality behind such a horrific act. He owned two YouTube accounts using the aliases Natural Selector 89 and Sturmgeist 89. Under these accounts, he posted videos of historically horrible events. He also appeared in at least one of his videos, in which he demonstrated his piece by shooting apples. A final post was uploaded on the day of his attack. The video showed photos of himself filtered red, along with a pic of his high school. Then, on the day in question, he entered the school and took the lives of eight and hurt an additional thirteen before taking his own life. Number 4. Nassim Akdam On April 3, 2018, 38-year-old Nassim entered YouTube's headquarters in San Bruno, California through an exterior parking garage. Once inside the outdoor patio area, the animal rights activist opened fire, hurting three and then taking her own life. Nassim, an Iranian immigrant, protested with PETA against the U.S. Marine Corps using pigs during training procedures and posted content that aligned with her beliefs, some of which went viral in Iran. An investigation by San Bruno police uncovered rants by the woman on YouTube, where Nassim alleges that the site suppressed certain videos and prevents traffic. According to a 2014 FBI study, Nassim was one out of only six sole females to commit an act like this. Number 3. Anthony Powell YouTube ranter Anthony Powell was the embodiment of the worst of YouTube. He uploaded videos to his channel under the name Tony48219 about his dislike for women. As with any extreme viewpoint, his ideas found a following, but this success was short-lived. When his words turned into action on Good Friday in 2009, this is when the 28-year-old YouTuber and student of the Mackenzie Fine Arts Center at Henry Ford Community College arrived at school with a mission to take a life. He targeted fellow student and YouTuber, 
20 year old Asia McGowan taking her life after which he took his own. As Powell stated in his videos, he was a true Christian. He likely saw himself as a man sent here to rid the world of atheists, whom he called the devil's troopers and filthy animals. The only devil's trooper I see here is Powell himself. Number 2. Elliot Roger Some YouTubers use this site as their online confessional. This is what this YouTuber did before he went on to take the lives of six people and harm many more in Isla Vista, California. This all happened on May 23, 2014. Before the spree, Roger uploaded a video entitled, Elliot Rogers Retribution, in which he told the world why he'd reached his breaking point. He blamed it all on girls rejecting him and being ignored by the popular kids at school. In the video, he said, you forced me to suffer all my life and now I'll force you all to suffer. He said he wanted to annihilate them and to give them what they deserve. The very next day, he stayed true to these words. He took the lives of three men at his home, took the lives of three women in front of a sorority house, as well as another man at a deli. In the end, Roger took his own life, ending the annihilation where it began. Before we get to number 1, my name is Chills and I hope you're enjoying my narration. If you're curious about what I look like in real life, then go to my Instagram at DylanIsChillinYT and tap that follow button to find out. It's a proven fact that generosity makes you a happier person, so if you're generous enough to hit that subscribe button and the bell beside it, then thank you. This way, you'll be notified of the new video we upload every Tuesday. Number 1. Anders Breivik Yet another person who espoused his horrible beliefs on YouTube just hours before committing one of the most horrible acts Norway had ever seen. Anders Breivik uploaded his manifesto in a video, which was later quickly removed from YouTube. In the manifesto, he says, the first drop of rain marks the coming of a great and unstoppable, cultural, conservative tidal wave. The tidal wave will cleanse Western Europe. He imagined a Europe based on similar nationalism and cultural conservatism, seen in nations like South Korea and Japan. After posting the video, in Oslo, Norway's capital, he took the lives of eight people. While chaos ensued, he traveled to Yatoya Island where the Workers' Youth League held a camp. There, dressed as a police officer, he took the lives of 69 children. The man was sentenced to containment, a prison sentence that can be suspended indefinitely, with a minimum time of 10 years. This is the harshest penalty available in Norway, considering the devastation Breivik caused. Some believe it isn't harsh enough. Thanks for checking out this video. Be sure to subscribe because we upload new countdowns every Tuesday and Saturday. Or if you're still not convinced, here are some of our other videos that I think you'd like. Enjoy!